Hi there, my name is Ushin Lunny, and this is Audio Talks on the Road with Harman Explore. In this episode, we'll talk to Harman's Karsten Olesen and Alexander Jono from FutureSource about new smart audio technologies, how they might change the way we're listening to music, and what to expect in 2021. Welcome to the podcast, guys. Hey, Karsten, where are you uh, joining us from today? Denmark, just a little bit north of uh, Copenhagen. Fantastic, beautiful part of the world. Uh, uh, welcome, Karsten. And Alexandre, uh, where are you joining us from? Hi, um, I'm joining you from London. Nice. A uh, place very dear to my heart. Um, okay, so we're just speaking after what's been a phenomenal Harmon Explore event. Uh, Karsten, talk to us a bit about the event. What was the audience reaction like? And did Harmon have a great after party? Oh, sure we did. But let me step a little bit back. And of course, it is a replacement of the CES. And at all time, we would prefer to meet our stakeholders and colleagues face to face in a physical uh, meeting. But uh, since this was not possible, we did the second best. And boy, did we take it to town because you had the whole production team lined up for a super, super smooth production, great audio, great video, great contents. For those who haven't experienced uh, the Explore, there's still an opportunity because it's a recorded session. But in that case, you're going to miss the live element at the end. Uh, we had the fabulous Keith Urban rounding off our event with unbelievable performance. He's very up now again uh, with a new album. So uh, it just went well. Fantastic. Delighted to hear that. So it sounds like Keith Urban absolutely rocked the virtual stage at Harmon Explore. But there was a lot of other exciting news during the event, Karsten, about new audio products. Was there anything in particular that rocked your world? There's a lot of new products, new technologies coming out constantly. And throughout the podcast, we'll go a little bit into some of the areas. But clearly, our new design on our portable lineup, uh, we call it the big logo design. That's a big introduction for us. Secondly, uh, our new party box lineup. We have several additions to our uh, Hammer Carton Citation lineup. We are in the smart audio area. We're coming with several new products in our headphones area as well. So yes, indeed, many, many news. If I should pick one of them, it's probably going to be the new products that we showcast in uh, uh, the Party Box area, Party Box on the go, the Party Box 710. And I think we'll maybe touch upon some of these product areas a little bit later in the cast. Sure. Uh, ain't no party like a Party Box party. Um, so are these JBL Party Boxes or is this from other brands within the Harman family? These are JBL brand products with the well-known JBL sound, as live as it can be. And what's maybe interesting with this product lineup, it's really the product platform where light and audio meets. So this product will give you the light show of a live concert or a disco, and at the same time, great audio. And add to that, uh, you have a guitar input, you've got a microphone input. So it's a very versatile product. So uh, I've seen a million of different use cases in Asia, they'll send a Bluetooth uh, audio stream into the product and then they hook up the wireless uh, microphone that they karaoke to it. So uh, many, many possibilities. Oh, well, I miss karaoke. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if anybody else misses me at karaoke, but uh, karaoke is quite fun <laughs> if you're delivering we, the we song. We miss anyway. ourselves in, in karaoke, right? Isn't it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Hey, so, uh, Alexandre, uh, are you a fan of karaoke yourself? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sometimes, yeah. Nice, nice. And, and I'm just curious, just in case people are not familiar with the work of Future Source, could you just give us the Future Source elevator pitch? Yeah, sure. So we are a market research and consulting firm based in the UK, um, and we're specialized in the technology and media industries. And one of our core expertise uh, is the audio business and all things audio. Um, so we track markets and key developments across devices, content, and technology, um, and we work with you know many different companies, uh, including audio manufacturers, content providers, uh, and also tech companies. Fantastic! So, Future Source really has the the helicopter view, the overview. You know, you're you're seeing 360, you're seeing into the future. I'm curious to get your perspective about some of the announcements that we just heard at Harman Explore. What do you think they tell us about consumer audio trends for 2021? 
Yeah, so you know, I think it's uh, it's really exciting to see that many products uh, being announced. You know, uh, and also what is really impressive is the list of features of each products, and it mm. really shows that you know consumer expectations have really evolved, uh, especially since 2020, because uh, you know it's a year that has uh, involved quite dramatic changes in consumer lifestyles. So their relationship to their audio products has evolved. Um, but, you know, what we see as well with all of these different features is that products are offering so much more uh, than just audio playback. Uh, mm-hmm. they, are, they are getting smarter and smarter. Uh, they are integrating always more technologies uh, to improve the listening experience. Uh, you know, if we just look at headphones, uh, because, you know, we have seen that uh, there were four new headphones announced, you know, especially wireless headphones. They have to tick so many boxes. Um, you know, the list of features is, is really impressive, you know, between noise cancelling, built-in voice assistance, better microphone, you know, because people are working from home, so they need to have great microphones. Um, and the list goes on and on, you know. And what is really impressive is that all of these features have to fit into such a small product, you know, when it's wireless earbuds, while being comfortable, with great battery life, and of course, great sound, you know, so it's really not an easy job to release headphones nowadays. And the other thing that really caught my eye is uh, the fact that JBL will be releasing, you know, a, a 75th uh, anniversary edition of the classic floor standing speakers. You know, it's great to firstly demonstrate the legacy of JBL in the audio business, but also it shows that there is still a demand for these more traditional hi-fi systems because a lot of consumers want uncompromised audio quality. And there is such a strong focus on quality now. And the fact that consumers have bought, you know, turntables during lockdown and that there is like more people listening to vinyls is also going in the direction of people wanting to have this kind of products. And finally, you know, what I find really interesting is the fact that the integrated amplifier is having all the latest technologies. So with a product like that, you know, you you can still be able to connect your streaming services and use all of your devices. So all of these products are still very much up to date now. So it's uh, it's really exciting. Yeah, totally. And um, I find the reissue of those JBL L100s, those classic speakers, completely mouthwatering. They're just things of beauty. And you mentioned there, there's this consumer hunger for you know, very high quality audio experiences. And this kind of leads us on to one of these mega trends that I think is certainly overlaid across Harman Explorer and the entire market, you know, from this point onwards is high resolution audio. Now, I remember when I first dipped my toe into high resolution audio, I don't know, it sort of was like, oh, this feels beautiful. This is a luxury experience. I can hear the definition and separation of the instruments and the players, and it feels so much more alive and spacious and defined. Um, I absolutely loved it. But, you know, I was kind of researching it for an article and fell in love with it immediately. I used to work in recording studios and it reminded me of the experiences I used to have in front of those enormous mixing desks with the six feet tall speakers. Now, what do you think, Alexandre, is behind the rise of high resolution? I think, you know, first is that, you know, consumer wants better audio quality. Um, you know, we, we run a lot of consumer research and every time we ask about, you know, uh, audio products and the feature that consumer wants, it's always about audio quality, number one, you know. And the other thing is that we uh, we also ask about streaming services. Uh, what is the feature that consumers would want to add to their streaming service? And again, you know, quality was number one. Um, so there is a demand for it. Uh, the main challenge was that uh, these files are usually pretty big and they, they are bigger than, than MP3. So it's a bit more challenging to stream and also to store offline, you know. Uh, but what happens over the past few years is that the, the speed of the internet and the quality ha- has uh, improved, you know, especially since, since 2020, because a lot of consumers upgraded their broadband to be able to work from home and watch movies uh, during lockdown. So they have access to better internet. So streaming high res has become easier. But the other thing is that, of course, you know, because people want better audio quality, manufacturers have been launching products that have always better audio quality. And part of that is to be compatible with high res. Uh, We've just seen it with the JBL Tour 1 headphones that are, you know, certified high res. And of course, you know, one of the key factors is the fact that Amazon HD launched as well, you know, uh, in 2019, because it has created a lot of awareness around high res. 
uh, and it has really benefited a lot of other services, like, you know, the, the traditional players like Tidal and Cobus. And the final thing is the fact that most of these services are also offering 3D audio content. So it's really promoting, you know, these enhanced machine experiences with high resolution audio, but also Dolby Atmos or 360 reality audio. So it's really great to see that it's going in that direction and we can expect that in the next few years it's going to continue, you know, like that. We completely see the same drivers in audio consumption. Not only is it the speed of internet, it's also the availability. And actually today you can receive pretty high risk, not only audio, but multimedia contents in the bus, in the train, wherever you are, it's available. And I think last year we had on the Future Source Audio Collaborative, we did the keynote speech on the decade of sound. And we touched upon exactly some of the drivers that Alexander was speaking to here. Consumers want higher audio, the technology enables it. And as long as we can see moving forward, 5G coming up, will further accelerate that development and also then accelerate the demand for better playback uh, hardware where we come in. So I think it's great for the consumer and it's interesting for the business as well. So not only for the home, but also on the go. Yeah, totally. Very good point. I think it is great news for the consumer. Speaking as a consumer, I'm so happy that high-res audio is a thing. But I'm, I'm curious to know, Karsten, do you listen to high-res audio? And if so, what kind of equipment do you use to enjoy the best audio? Just a lot of different equipment. Right now on this recording, I'm using the Lyra microphone from our AKG Pro organization. And uh, yesterday night, I unpacked one of the first engineering samples of the upcoming Harman Kardon Radiance loudspeakers. Some people are referring to them as pencil speakers. They are literally very, very narrow, and it's just incredible how much audio you can get out of this shape today. They are pretty tall, like uh, one meter 80 a pair. Every week I hook up new systems and I play around. That's why I have my own part of the house where I can uh, keep all my equipment. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a heavy user of audio, but I wanted to go back to the, the discussion before on technology and consumer and mobility. Maybe there's one thing more that's a driver. Just audio as a communication vehicle seems to really gain traction here in the 20s. If you think about an audio podcast that we're making right now, practically five, 10 years ago, podcast was a super narrow medium. But today, all newspapers have several podcast channels and it's becoming mainstream step by step. And what I'm getting to is listening to an audio soundtrack is a different process than experiencing an audio-video multimedia soundtrack, right? So it's a very big difference because the audio soundtrack and the audio experience is more demanding because you have to create the pictures in the brain. Not everything is served. And that means that you are much more focused on that listening experience. Whether in a movie, you many of us are doing two screens at the same time. When there's a boring part of the movie, we check the news. And when you are on an audio soundtrack, if you're not on, you just miss the context and you're done. So I think audio as a vehicle is increasing its role uh, here in the 20s. Technology is backing it up. And then we are back to where Alexander left it before. Yeah, indeed. And uh, to any listeners who are painting a mental picture of Karsten, Alexandre and myself, please feel free to put a, a stack of Marshall amps directly behind me. All of them turned up to 11. <laughs> and I'll just stand here for the rest of the podcast. Uh, that was fascinating. Thank you, Karsten. Yes, I totally agree. I'm addicted to podcasts myself. It's an honor to be a part of this podcast. Uh, but like when I'm not doing this, I'm listening to podcasts. I just love it because you can multitask and it does exist in your own head. It's yes. more, um, it's easier to multitask with audio recordings. And I find that so valuable because, you know, life is busy. Um, but I, I'd like to stay with you for a second, Karsten. Now, last year during the lockdown, folks were very much reconnecting with high quality audio, with their home hi-fi setups. But as we heard our friend Chris Dragon talk about last year uh, in the first episode of this miniseries podcast, people are using headphones as personal cocoons to get some personal space at home. You know, if everyone's there trying to learn, trying to 
exist and, you know, school is locked down, etc. So consumers are, are kind of forging new relationships with personalized audio bubbles. Do you think that this might affect the way that consumers relate to headphones moving forward? Because, you know, we seem to have kind of unlocked a genie where people are rediscovering uh, the many facets of audio in their lives. I think um, stepping back when Alexander was talking to the long list of features that a product must have today, I actually think, yeah, of course, uh, you have the whole acceleration where probably you could say that uh, the pandemic acted more like a catalyst or accelerating ongoing trends. I'd say ANC, uh, active noise cancellation, adaptive noise cancellation, advanced noise cancellation has been on the rise for several years. And you've got several of our colleagues in the industry who brought it very far. For instance, if you take one example, uh, the JBL club, we're using the most advanced ANC technology Mm -hmm. and you're able to suppress outside noise with up to 45 dB. ANC has gone from something that was more like a gimmick to a real feature that really isolates you. And uh, now, of course, during the pandemic, the need was uh, especially urban families clustered together and uh, working from home. Yes, there's been a significant need for cocooning and me time, not only because of uh, having a a silent workspace, but also because, uh, you know, you want to, you want to have some time on your own. You want to chill out and re-energize and yeah. that own experience is great for sometimes for that. I do think that uh, moving forward, there'll also be features that allows more people with headphones to share the same soundtrack and have a social experience. I mm. think all this isolation and maybe we'll see uh, down the road, there'll be some uh, trends going the other way. And then we quickly read to enable our hardware to accommodate for a cocoon but also the opposite, that you want to share the same music, the same podcast as your friends, and maybe in other regions of the world, uh, maybe with family members in the same house as yourself. Absolutely. I, I'm just, as you were talking there, I was thinking, you know, what if uh, you know, BTS, the uh, massive K-pop band, and they have their BTS army, they're just so impressive. But imagine if they decided to do an event and it was about everyone joining in their cocoon and coming into this big virtual space. That would be, uh, you know, mind blowing, I think. Yes. And then you have the cocoon part, you have the social part. And then I think also uh, a driver will be personalized, immersive experience. It has to be bloody easy. Uh, None of us (laughs) would want to take an engineering degree just to operate a Harman product. So We spend a huge amount of time and efforts in making our products very, very simple. And uh, they got to be versatile and and speak to all of these trends at the same time. Totally, totally. Well, on on behalf of uh, somebody who doesn't have an engineering degree of any description, uh, thank you very much for (laughs) for making the products nice and easy to use. Coming over to yourself, Alexandre, we've heard there some really interesting thoughts about the headphone market, about why People are embracing ANC noise cancelling headphones last year during the lockdowns. What do you think is going to happen in the market? What's the future source view for noise cancelling headphones this year in 2021? Yeah, you know, like uh, this feature is, has really expanded tremendous growth, you know, over the past years. Uh, and as we mentioned, you know, especially in 2020, uh, just to give you uh, a bit of context, you know, headphones with ANC were up 117% uh, in volume in 2020. Uh, wow. And this trend is not going away uh, in 2021, you know, especially for wireless headphones. Uh, it has been uh, well demonstrated by the fact that all the JBL headphones announced uh, during the Harman Explore have ANC. Uh, yes. And the success, you know, is easy to understand. You know, it's, it's great on the move when you travel in a plane or in a train or when you are commuting. Uh, but also, you know, it's, it's great for walking. Uh, because uh, you have the value of uh, filtering external noise, helping you to concentrate. So either way, if people are walking from home, they will still find value in these headphones. And if they go back to the office as well, you know. And of course, Mm. you know, for personal listening, uh, uh, you know, we've explained that the, the, the value is tremendous because uh, it really helps you to, to have your personal space. Um, so it has really become a must uh, for new wireless headphones to have this feature. 
Sure, sure. And let's move on to another mega trend. Uh, staying with yourself, Alexandre, and uh, it's a connected area. It's the incredible market of gaming, the gaming market. Now, I've read that Future Source has some very interesting predictions for the gaming market this year in 2021. Can you share some of the headlines with our listeners? Yeah, sure. So, firstly, you know, before really talking about 2021, we we kind of need to look back at 2020 because it has really been a record year for the gaming market and mm. it's really shaped and is going to shape, you know, what is going to happen in the future. Uh, because obviously people staying at home have created a huge increase of the number of gamers, uh, you know, either on PC, consoles or mobile gaming as well. Um, so it had a very strong effect on, on the demand for gaming headsets. So we had, you know, gamers who upgraded during lockdown to have better sound and be able to play on, you know, multiplayer online games, you know, like Fortnite or Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. We've also had parents that are buying these headphones for their kids so that they could socialize and play games with other friends uh, during lockdown. And what was really interesting is that uh, the people who have bought these headphones, they also ended up using them to work from home. And, you know, yes. or for remote schooling, because at the end of the day, they offer great comfort, sound, and they have a microphone. Yes, many of them has a boom microphone, right? Exactly. So the quality is great, you know. So because of that, the, the volume of gaming assets have increased 25% uh, in 2020. And 2021 is also going to be a strong year for the gaming market as a whole, you know, because there are the new generations of consoles, the PS5 and the Xbox. And so this is going to drive demand for gaming peripherals and, of course, headsets as well. But also, we we don't know yet how the pandemic is going to evolve. And it's likely that at least for the first half of 2021, we will keep seeing strong levels of engagement from gamers because people are going to still spend more time at home. And the last factor that is really helping this market is the trend of live streaming, uh, you know, mm-hmm. on Twitch, for example, uh, because, you know, live streamers usually use gaming headsets. It's also a really powerful marketing tools for your brands because, you know, these live streamers often have millions of followers. Um, so when they wear headsets, it's really impacting and, and creating demand for these products. Um, so we really expect that it's going to drive a lot of demand for the next few years uh, for these products. I should really mention a couple of things here. Number one, of course, JBL joined the gaming party with our JBL Quantum headphone range. And we started launching uh, in the second quarter. And of course, it's gone really phenomenal. And with proprietary technology, a great comfort. But um, one other additional driver is what's happening inside the games. Again, we talked about technology paving the way for higher res uh, audio. And uh, think about um, Fortnite for a minute. And uh, some of the soundtracks in Fortnite are really, really very mm. well recorded. It is excellent soundtrack. Some even with symphony orchestras, not just synthesized music, but orchestras. Second, you have live stream event where Marshmello is mixing the sound live that attracts a lot of traffic. So the content is getting also finer and finer. The broadcasting gets finer and finer. And therefore, it's interesting also for Harman, because now it means that in the gaming space, we can really play with our audio competences and with our sound technology, really enhance the user experience with great sound. And the coolest thing, I think, with our uh, approach in gaming headphones is really our 3D sound. Uh, I think most of us, are, uh, whether we admit it or not, is very important to know where the enemy is coming from when it's yeah. a shooting game or, mm-hmm. or, or battle game. And here we say JBL Quantum Sound to Survive. (laughs) You really hear where the enemy is coming from. If it's a 10 o'clock position up, you actually don't need to look. You just shoot over there. Very cool product indeed. Absolutely. That's pretty baller. If you have that 3D sound, you can hear that something's behind you and just put your gun over your shoulder and without even looking over it's, uh, that's that's going to be an impressive move uh, so that's really interesting like the two communities of users you know there's folks using it for immersive audio in gaming and for live events and then it's also 
you know, folks who are going to do a lot of Zoom calls and they just want good audio. They want something nice and lightweight. They're not going to have a headache after using it all day. So the JBL headsets are amazing for that. I think they're lightweight and you have that nice boom microphone as well. I know a lot of people using that just to avoid Zoom fatigue. And uh, you mentioned some very cool technology there, proprietary technology that Harman and JBLs developed. Is there anything you can talk about, Karsten, um, that is a bit of a glimpse into what's coming up for your activity in the gaming sector this year? We will constantly update a JPL Quantum platform with more and more advanced functionality. For us in the gaming space, it's really rolling out the current range of gaming headphones. It is rolling out some very cool monitors also for headphones. I think the gaming market and the work from home market is converging to some extent. There's an overlap of technology, but also there's a lot of movement. In, for instance, another area that I could mention was the value of home recording, home mixing equals the value of professional studios, right? And uh, what do you need for this? I mean, they're literally today mega hits that are produced in a living room that almost go directly to Spotify and uh, actually disrupt the whole sound space. So, so you need for, for that, of course, you need microphones, you need headphones, you need studio monitors. So I think we talked about versatility of products. I heard you, Austin, talked about the L100. I think the need is going to be, um, for instance, if you have a compact set of two-way monitors, like a six-and-a-half driver and a small horn or a tweeter, mm. when you want to record and create You want a flat frequency response. You don't want the sound equipment to color. You know that because you've been in the studio yourself so many years. That's going to be flat. But again, if you want now to use the same set of desktop monitors to play back a Bluetooth stream, you don't want flat frequency response anymore. There you want to, I recommend the JBL sound curve. Uh It's possible to create products that, hey, I can use them when I'm creating music and I'm recording music, I'm mixing music. But these same loudspeakers, because I may be a student, I'm 25, and I don't want to have four different sound systems for four different purposes, I want the same. That's the home studio market. Then you have the gaming market, Uh, also monitors, headphones, microphones. Then you go to work from home. What do you need? Headphones, monitors, microphones, video. So I think there's a lot of uh, acceleration here during covid And some of these markets are still, in a way, very fragmented because you don't really have one dominant player or two dominant players from a distribution channel perspective. Some of the products you will find on Amazon, some other products you will find in media market. So so I think where we are going from now on, audio from being kind of an entertainment element where I sit down and I listen to music or I have a social event, a party, and music is then the creative part of audio, audio that connects us, either work from home or I create music. I think these uh, trends are very, very uh, interesting moving forward. Nice. Uh, I was making quite a few mental notes to my future self there because <laughs> that sounds very good to have these different curves and uh, yeah, I mean, the pursuit of a nice flat frequency curve when you're recording and mixing is, uh, it's it can be all-encompassing at times, but then you absolutely want the ability just to switch on the hi-fi curve and get it to boost out mm. the music in a way that you can really feel it in a different way. That's fascinating. Great to hear that it's going to be available in one unit, or it is available in one unit, should I say. And, you know, we're kind of touching on a lot of these new technologies and something that's really come into the public consciousness, uh, Alexandre, is soundbars. Soundbars have been, uh, you know, they do things that would have been mind-blowing to my younger self uh, in terms of surround sound and immersive sound. And I would suggest that soundbars are one of the big stories of 2020. And, you know, we had Dolby Atmos, we had uh, the JBL Bar 9.1. From your crystal ball, Alexandra, what do you think consumers might be looking for from their soundbars this year in 2021? So, you know, uh, soundbars is, is really a product category that is really fascinating uh, mm. because it's it's really evolved uh, into an all-in-one product that is used uh, for far more than just watching TV uh, because, yeah. you know, they are compact, 
they are well positioned under the TV. And usually the TV has a, a great position within in the living room. So it's great sound performance as well because some have a subwoofer or they have, you know, some uh, surround speakers. And But the most important thing is that they have a lot of tech features. You know, they are really mm-hmm. feature-heavy products. And so, you know, between like a voice assistants, like consumers can use them as a smart speaker to listen to music, to, to listen to podcasts, but also, you know, to watch movies because as you mentioned, you know, they have these immersive audio technologies and uh, Dolby Atmos and DTSX are definitely one of the features that consumers want the most, you know, because firstly, during COVID, they were unable to go to the cinema. So they've Mm. been watching movies at home uh, far more, you know. But the other thing looking at 2021 is that, you know, one of the biggest news of of recent weeks is, is Warner announcing that all of the movies that they will release in 2021 will be available at the same time at cinemas and on HBO Max. So it's really bringing the cinema to your home, you know, and Dolby Atmos and DTSX will definitely play a key role um, in delivering uh, this experience. The other thing that we are seeing and that is really interesting is that, um, you know, we, we mentioned the fact that consumers want better audio quality. And what we are seeing with the soundbar market is that the premium soundbars that are over $1,000 plus dollars is actually the fastest growing price bracket uh, within this market uh, in 2020. So it shows that consumers value sound quality and that, you know, soundbars are becoming really uh, central to their audio listening habits because they are ticking so many boxes as a, as a home audio product, you know. So it's, a, it's definitely a product category that, that we expect is going to expand really strong growth uh, over the next few years. Absolutely. I'm completely aligned with the views of future sources and Alexander here because the soundbar has developed from being kind of a TV companion product. Uh, You would buy a TV and get a soundbar for free to become an independent and self-standing product category. Because if I'm a consumer and I buy JBL 9.1, why would I have another sound system in that room? Yeah, totally. It's it's a very exciting category, I think. And like you say, it's consumers are just, they need a bit more space in their living rooms, but they want immersive sound experiences. They're doing a lot of home cinema. Uh, it's fantastic. It's it's all good news for the consumer as far as I'm concerned. And um, staying with yourself, Carsten, I'd just like to reflect that, you know, towards the end of last year, we started hearing news of vaccines and these are being rolled out. And that's very good news. And at some stage, the world is going to be getting ready to P-A-R-T-Y and have a good time again all together. Do you think we're going to see an explosion of demand for Bluetooth party speakers this year? It's been a, a long explosion for us. <laughs> it's been like an explosion of one and a half year. We started in, in, in the party box area just two years ago and took leadership position in just 24 months. Wow. Uh, this is again... Uh, a great category is because it captures so many different things in, in just a single box. Yeah. Uh, one platform uh, gives you entertainment. You can connect a microphone. You can connect a guitar. Uh, you can Bluetooth. You can carry it around its battery or on the mains. So, yes, I think it's uh, definitely a product category that will continue to see growth over the next uh, three to five years. Fantastic. And apologies uh, in advance to anybody who comes across me walking around with a portable speaker doing (laughs) karaoke on a street corner. Uh, I can't help myself. (laughs) So, Alexandra, my karaoke friend, uh, we're all karaoke friends here. Um, From your perspective, what has been the most or some of the most exciting under the hood technologies that you've seen unveiled as part of the Harmon Explorer event? Um, so I think, you know, we talked a bit about it uh, before, but, you know, the, the active noise counseling uh, is really interesting. You know, I think uh, especially the one on the JBL Tour 1, you know, that is uh, really adaptive to, uh, uh, you know, personal attributes and to the ambient noises, you know. And I, I think that really shows the huge developments made with this technology. And why I find this really interesting is because it really shows that products are getting smarter and more personalized. You know, it's about really offering uh, the ability to adapt to each customers. And so that's really interesting. And, and keeping with the theme of personalization, one of the other technology that I found really interesting is the fact that, uh, you know, for this uh, new integrated amplifier, uh, there will be like the integration of Dirac room optimization. And that's wow. really interesting because we are reaching the point where 
products can compensate for the acoustic characteristics of the room of each customers. And, you know, for audio brands, it has been one of the biggest challenges because uh, you can release the most amazing products. Uh, it's, you know, the way it will perform is heavily dependent on the room and the acoustics of where people are using these products. Um, you know, in recording studios, uh, engineers, they, they consider the room as an instrument. Uh, yes. So the acoustic can have such an impact on the sound. So having technology that can compensate the room acoustics to offer the most optimum experience uh, is really a dream, you know, and, and it was already available in high-end home theater products. But it's great to see that it's more often that we see this kind of technologies and we can really expect that this kind of technologies will filter through uh, more mass market products, you know, in the next few years. Fantastic. That's great. Yes, I remember going into studios and there'd be a certain place in the control room that would be a bass trap that you would have to sit in that corner if you wanted to really feel all of the bass frequencies. Fantastic. We'll be looking out for that. Now, coming over to yourself, Karsten, I wonder if there was one piece of, you know, Game of Thrones styles, one piece of audio equipment to rule them all that is simply a must have for 2021. What would that be? What would you pin your flag to? Uh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I got into this business because I just love the gear myself and nice. I, I want all the products. Uh, <laughs> I would go for the Harman Kardon Citation Oasis, which is a small bedroom companion that has voice clock management, alarm, great audio, and wireless charging. And the last is great because you just dump your phone on the pad uh, next to you when you go to bed, and next day it's completely charged again. It helps me with many, many different things at the same time. That's what I like about it in a very simple format. That's fantastic. That is something that I think a lot of listeners can uh, absolutely add to their um, New Year sales shopping list for themselves. We'd just like to wrap up with inviting each of you to choose a track for the Harmon Audio Talks on the road playlist that we have on Tidal. And uh, every episode, our VIP guests choose a song that resonates for them. It can be themed, it can be just freestyle, and I'll come to your good self first. Karsten. Oh, uh, I wasn't prepared for that. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, no, no, but that's even better. That's 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 even better. Uh, Fantastic. So... Uh, I'm going to choose the soundtrack of uh, John Mayer, a great performer, great singer, great guitarist. I'll take a song like uh, Stop the Train. Nice. A++. Fantastic. Thank you. What a good choice. We should be adding that to our title playlist with happiness. And Alexandre, over to yourself. What's your choice for our playlist? So my choice is uh, I Wish You Well by Bill Withers. Uh, because, you know, he left us uh, in 2020. So I thought, you know, it would be a nice way to say a last goodbye uh, before fully diving into 2021. Nice. That's that's a, a beautiful, beautiful sentiment. Thank you so much. And uh, my own choice for the playlist is on the theme of audio talks being on the road is uh, Roadrunner by Jonathan Richman and the Modern Lovers. Okay, and with that, we're just going to wrap up another fantastic episode of Audio Talks on the Road with Harman Explore. Thank you so much to Harman's Karsten Olison and Alexander Jornot from Future Source for joining us today. The future is here already and it sounds awesome. Listeners, we will see you at the next episode.